Hello everyone, welcome back. I am Dr. Alexandra Mayer. Um, in today's video, we are diving into a topic that I get a lot of questions on, and that is thyroid. Um, so I treat a lot of thyroid in my office, and um, today we're diving into one of the things to think about, especially in cases where kind of the CNS level of thyroid, right? So like the brain thyroid connection, things like TSH and free T4 levels are normal, but there's still a lot of symptoms of hypothyroidism. So um, before we dive into this, if you like the content that we're putting out, go ahead and hit the like button for us. Um, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and then share this video with a friend because really we're just trying to get our content out there to more people. We're just trying to help more people um, and you guys are the way that we're able to do that. So we really appreciate it. All right, so without further ado, um, today's video is on a lab test called reverse T3. And basically the way I explain this to my patients. So when we're thinking about thyroid testing, and we, we have talked about this in the past, but I'm gonna review it. Um, when we're thinking about thyroid testing, the majority of thyroid testing is done at the CNS level. So checking things like thyroid stimulating hormone, which comes from your brain and says to your thyroid, hey, we need you to make hormone, right? Um, and then TSH will actually rise over time if your thyroid is not participating quite as well because the brain is constantly having to signal the thyroid to do its job. Then we look at things like free T3 and free T4. Um, so when your brain signals your thyroid, your thyroid makes mostly T free T4 and it takes it out into the peripheral tissue. So like liver, muscles, um, things like that and converts it into free T3. Free T3 is more active and more metabolically available. So when we're running a thyroid panel, bare minimum, we should be running both free T4 and free T3 and then TSH so we can really check how's your thyroid participating, right? Like the brain signals the thyroid, how's the thyroid participating, but also how's your conversion? Um, because your ability to convert to free T3 is really, really, really important if you're looking for symptom management, which most of us are, um, if we're hypothyroid. So this is where reverse T3 comes in. Basically, when we're converting free T4 into free T3, we can take a different pathway, and that is to convert free T3 into something called reverse T3. So reverse T3 is the exact same structure as free T3, and because our hormones use a lock and key mechanism at the cellular level, they fit into the receptor site, the same receptor site as free T3 does, um, but they're completely inactive. So the example that I use is if you and I are going to our house and we both have a key and my key fits in the lock but doesn't turn and your key fits in the lock, gets us in the house and all things are good. Well, if I get there first and I put my key in, it doesn't matter that you have the right key. It literally doesn't matter because we're not getting in the house because the key is the, the site for the key is blocked, right? That's exactly what happens at a cellular level. What happens is if you have a ton of reverse T3, reverse T3 will bind to these receptor sites and then there's all this free T3 that's there and available to do the work, but can't bind. Um, and this is why we talk about sometimes hypothyroidism more at a cellular level than a CNS level. So with this test, we're getting into the nitty gritty. We're getting into the nitty gritty of like, how is your cell actually utilizing your thyroid? There are a lot of things to take into consideration with this. So first of all, if we're running reverse T3, um, just running reverse T3 as a standalone test, right? And looking at reverse T3 without comparing it to free T3 really does nothing. So it's really about the free T3 to reverse T3 ratio. And if we look at the ratio of those two things, it can give us a lot of information. So what can, let's say our reverse T3 is high um, and our free T3 to reverse T3 ratio is low. Um, what could be impacting this? What are the things that we need to think about? So there are a lot of things that can impact our conversion um, to free T3 or, or our conversion to reverse T3. The number one thing that we start to think about is certain nutrient deficiencies. So that pathway is completely selenium dependent, meaning that in order for you to make free T3 from free T4, you have to have selenium. If you don't have enough selenium, you are going to convert to reverse T3. Other things that impact our conversion to reverse T3 and make us more likely to create higher levels of reverse T3 are um, higher levels of inflammation, so chronic inflammation, um, crash dieting and starvation, um, higher levels of cortisol. So it's actually interesting. In order to use free T3 at a cellular level, you have to have normal levels of cortisol. 
but if you have too high levels of cortisol, you will convert more to reverse T3. I often explain it to my patients, it's kind of a protective mechanism, right? Your thyroid is your powerhouse of metabolism. It's your powerhouse of basically everything that goes on in your body. And sometimes what happens is the body is thinking, okay, I need to dial back my metabolism, right? I need to protect myself and save myself. And so it uses your thyroid as a way to do that. Reverse T3 is also one of the ways it will see rise if we're having things that um, are maybe impacting the body poorly or things that would be the body would perceive as like an external stressor or like threat that it needs to protect itself against. Other things to think about would be um, poor diabetes management or insulin resistance. Now, um, I think I've mentioned this in the past on the channel, but it's really important to realize that those two things are not the same. Um, sometimes you can have insulin resistance where your fasting level of insulin is really high, but your blood sugar is completely normal, right? So checking fasting insulin is really important. Um, chronic infections play a huge role in conversion to reverse T3. And then there's certain medications that will increase your conversion to reverse T3. So um, certain beta blockers can, um, certain oral contraceptives can increase your um, conversion to reverse T3. And then glucocorticoids, um, so like corticosteroids can also impact your conversion to reverse T3 and in, increase your conversion to reverse T3. So um, let's say as a patient, you decide to go and get a thyroid panel run by your doctor and you ask them to run reverse T3. So you're looking at the free T3 to reverse T3 ratio and you realize that that ratio is a little bit low or your reverse T3 is maybe a little higher than we'd like it to be. Um, honestly, usually for me, with my patients, starting nutritionally is a really, really good option. Um, making sure that you're getting in adequate amounts of calories, um, not over-exercising, so especially not doing way, way, way too much cardio, um, and getting in good nutrients. Things like selenium, which we talked about, um, and then reducing stress are kind of the basic lifestyle things to think about, right? Um, oftentimes with conversion to reverse T3, it's not necessarily that it has this like one size fits all, like you just medicated and it helps. There is gonna be an underlying contributing factor to this. And so it's finding that underlying contributing factor and then treating that underlying contributing factor to get you feeling better in the long run. Um, put in your comments below what questions you guys have for reverse T3. This is definitely something that I think in patients who haven't gotten the answers, right? Um, their symptoms are all screaming hypothyroid, but their cellular, like central nervous system, um, TSH and free T4 don't necessarily correlate with that. Um, reverse T3 and particularly that free T3 to reverse T3 ratio can be a really good step for labs um, and can give just a lot of information. All right, we'll see you next week for next week's video.